I debated whether to actually make a video on this point because it's going to come up again and again in the book of Proverbs. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Having looked at all the characteristics of a wise person, what our commentary then goes into is the relationship between wisdom and righteousness. That all those characteristics of a wise person can only really truly come from a person who understands righteousness. To use more Lutheran terminology, we would say they understand justification by grace through faith. To be more biblical, they understand that Jesus is a sacrifice of atonement for them. Uh, the idea is that only a person who knows who God is, fears God as a righteous judge, and loves and trusts him as an unconditional savior, is able to have true biblical wisdom. Now, this is going to come up again and again, and I think I'm okay with that because we really need to understand this if we're going to understand the book of Proverbs. The idea is not that a person who's not a Christian can't have wisdom. They're just not going to have divine wisdom. And what our commentator brings out here is the way you can tell is whether that wisdom is willing to actually lose in everyday situations for the sake of a greater good that maybe isn't even their own. Uh, my family is reading through the Proverbs right now as part of our devotional time, and one of the recent Proverbs talks about how a righteous person will benefit a city. It's not just for my benefit that I would be wise, it's for the city's benefit. It's for all the people around me. It's those people who are my neighbors, who I love, because Jesus says, love your neighbor. So, what does a righteous person have that a not righteous person doesn't have? They have an understanding that there is an almighty judge over all things who is keeping track of all wickedness. And that means that they can't look at their life as purely materialistic. I just do things and that has cause and effect. And really, at the end of the day, it doesn't totally matter whether I'm a good person or not a good person because, well, frankly, the world's going to burn up anyways and no one's going to be around to remember anything that I did. So I'm completely free to be whoever I want to be and do whatever I want to do. A righteous person understands that there is an almighty God who has put eternity in the hearts of man, to use Ecclesiastes. They also understand that there is an almighty Savior who has died for their sins, like we just celebrated on Easter and Good Friday. And that means that they are free not to try to earn righteousness for themselves in front of this almighty righteous judge, but they are actually set free from, uh, the, from the requirements of the law in order to be a good neighbor, to be wise for the sake of people around them. In other words, they are a free agent, maybe if we want to say it in, in terms of uh, sports, they have all this ability, but now they have to figure out where they're going to use all that ability because they're not going to use it on themselves. And that is the key to wisdom. Uh, one of the ideas of wisdom is that you really can't have wisdom if you're just going to the next thing, the next thing, the next thing. We've talked about that in some of the characteristics of a wise person. If you're just moving on to the next show, the next phone call, the next tweet, the next Facebook post, the next YouTube video, the next soccer practice, the next meal, if you're just running from thing to thing and you don't have time to slow down and think, you will never become wise. Only a righteousness that comes from outside of you that says you don't have to be significant, you don't have to pull it off, you don't have to be somebody, you don't have to make that much money, you don't have to ascend in the company, you don't have to have these kind of relationships in order to be good, only that kind of righteousness will actually set you free to take time to think and to be wise. That's why the, the old Christians used to practice the Sabbath. Us New Testament Christians were not as good at it. But it's really a valuable thing because it allows you the space to think about who God is, about who you are, and about how to live as his adopted child through faith in Jesus. That's true wisdom. And that's why God says that the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. In other words, the fear that says you are the righteous judge leads me to say I have not been righteous, therefore I need righteousness. And then the word reveals to me that I am righteous in Jesus and therefore I can be wise. Fear of the Lord is the first step in good, biblical, divine wisdom. So, is it that there are Christians out there who are wise? Yeah, there are. 
but they're not this kind of wise. And that's why the Proverbs are valuable. So continue to dig into these, but don't forget what makes them all possible and what makes them all valuable. That's an understanding of who you are and who God is. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We'll catch you next time.